So, you know, we like, man, come on, bro. You on that BS, man. Nigga in here hungry for real, bro. You playing so. He done told us, every single one of us, like, man, go to y'all room, pack y'all property. Go to y'all room, pack y'all property. So, she, we all go in here and pack it. We willing to go to the hole. At least we know they get trades in the hole. So we go to the hole. So when we get down into the hole, we gotta put us outside in the cages first because it's like, bro, it's like 10 people they got to find rooms for. And they don't always got that much space available. So now they gotta try to let some people out who've been in there long enough and put new people in. So yeah, me, T, and like eight other people, we all but went to the hole. Cause they really trying us right now. So we sat out there in the cages about two hours and then we're trying to, then they come get us and start sending us up to our room. They sent T up there to that room, all the way in the corner, the last room in the corner, upstairs. That's where I really wanted to go. Then they sent me like four rooms down from T, upstairs on that same side, and put me in another room. They put everybody else wherever they put everybody. When they got me outside the door telling him to cuff up, they opened the door. I see the dude, dude named Boogaloo. I knew him. I had been in the dorm with him before. Matter of fact, he used to be one of my guys years ago, and then some crazy stuff happened with him, and that's really why he's still in the hole. He been in the hole for about a year. It just depends on what prison you go to. If you're a part of a group and you do some food gays and stuff, they could just leave you alone and overlook you or they could be trying to attack you. At this specific prison, they was trying to attack him and he been sitting in a hole for about a year. I go in the room, bro. First thing I notice right there on the floor, it's like a bunch of chicken bones piled up on the floor. The room stank, bro. He got on top of both locker boxes. It's like, look like old potatoes. Man, it's just like food stuff. It just got a food type of smell. So I already know I'm not finna be in here long, but his ordeal was he was something they call Ifa. And from my understanding, they believe in um like their their ancestors, their deceased ancestors. I'm not I'm not really 100 percent sure if I'm correct, but it's like in their eyes, that's almost God, almost like your ancestors gonna guide you. You gotta talk to your dead ancestors. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. You know what I'm saying about your ancestors. So that's what the type of person he was. He said he supposed to lay stuff out and put stuff out and stuff like that. Like CB, what's up, bro? He do his hand like that. So I do like this. I'm like, what's going on, bro? Bro, when I did this and did this to the man, the man said, I said, what's up, bro? What's going on? He said, Ooh. I snatched my hand back. I say, folks. Bro, what the fuck you got going on? Touching my hand, talking about some damn woo -hoo. Like, bro, what the hell wrong with you? He asked me, did I just dap anybody up or was I talking to anybody? This, this, and that. I'm like, bro, what do you got going on, G? I don't even like the way that just sounded. And he was, he went to telling me that he's a child of whatever the name of whatever he said he was and that he can sense bad energy. He can sense danger or anything like that. So he 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 can sense bad energy. He can sense danger. He can sense a threat or people who, you know, whatever. So he was telling me that the last person who hand I shook, they're bad energy type people. Like you got to stay away from them. You can't deal with them. He said, well, my ancestors just told me when I shook your hand, I just felt it. But I just felt that my ancestors was just letting me know you need to wash your hands and you need to try to tap in with your ancestors so they could get that up off of you so you won't have nothing going on. I'm sitting here looking at him like, bro, you know, that this just not going to work, bro. I'm not saying what he's saying is BS or nothing like that. Everybody got their different beliefs, bro. But we not finna do this, bro. We just not finna do this. I turn straight around, go over there to the door, go to kick in the door. Do, 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 do. He like, see, Bill, bro, you straight? I'm like, bro, I'm just finna pull a stunt. I'm really trying to get in the room with my partner. So I go to kick in the door again. Do, 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 do. So the officer like, who is that? What room that is? So in the process of the officer saying that, I hear somebody on the back window saying, say, Bill, Bill. The only person who called me Bill, Bill is T. Y'all know T. So I go over there to the back door. I'm like, yo. He like, who the hell that is doing all that kicking? I was like, that's me. He was like, what room you in? So I told him what room I'm in. He like, bro, I'm in here by myself, bro. I was like, I had him finna try to come down there. So I was finna pull this stunt to get out anyway. But when T went to tell me what room he was in, I come back over here. So the officer like, what room that is kicking? So I told him the room number. So he come over. I'm like, bro, get me out of this room, bro. He like, what's up? What's going on? I'm like, bro, get me out of this room, bro. 
So I'm like, saying, what the hell y'all got going on? Like, I'm finna call Debo and let him know. I went to throwing up gang signs, all kind of stupid stuff. I said, boy, that's old JD. I'm finna kill this nigga. Get me out the room with this nigga right now, bro. Right the fuck now, bro. So he get on the radio while he's still looking through the window. So when I turn back to bro, I'm like, you know, from the back, it looked like I'm frowned up and talking crazy to him, but I was moving like that on purpose. And I told bro, I was like, nah, I'm just trying to get in the room with my partner real quick. I'm just trying to get in the room down there with T. But she, you know, I just got down and I'm just doing like that. So to the officer, it looked like I'm spazzing out on folks. So he, so he got on the phone. He was like, Debo said you can move to another room, but you need to tell him what's the reason you trying to move. So I was quick on my toe, but I turned around. I said, bro, I knew this man from the streets and he did some real full gaze and stuff. And I really want to whack his ass. Get me out the room with him, bro. And he got back on the radio. He went to saying whatever, whatever he was saying. He told me to pack my property. I said, my property already packed. I ain't never unpack it. And uh, he told me, come on. And he brought me out. He said, I got to sit you in the shower until we find a room with somebody you compatible with. I was like, man, put me in the room with my partner down here. So he was like, who? So I told him T last name. I'm like, bro, he in the room by himself. And we just came from the same dorm, bro. Put me in the room with T. So he walked me down here. I put my property on the floor. He look at T chart because they got to match up in the system that we're compatible to be in the room next to each other. So he get on the radio. He go to call my name, saying T name, basically asking them, can we be in the room together? And they said no, because we were two different affiliations. But, bro, that prison don't give a damn about none of that, bro. They be saying that, trying to act like they keeping up with that. But I promise you, they don't care, bro. They will put you in the room with anybody. So I went to tell him, like, bro, this is my partner. I'm telling you. So I just go to doing all kind of extra. I'm like, man, I know that man from the street. That man know my mom. I know his mom. Man, me and that man grew up in the same sandbox. I just go to adding all kind of stuff on there. So he go back on there. He talking to me like he said he good. He say, you know, whatever, whatever. So they was like, hey, just put him in there. It is Just put him in there. So they put me in the room with T. So we ain't that big. Cool. Now here's the problem with being on the end room. Sometimes when they run trays, always keep in mind it's an inmate. Most of the time, sometimes the officer run the trays. Most of the time, it's an inmate running your trays that's actually bringing you the trays. So if you got issues with a nigga, he could do something fugazi, try to throw something in your tray. You know what I'm saying? Just anything like that. Or he can take some for himself or get his homeboy a couple extra ones. Now, when you're on the end room, the only good time is when they start with your room. If they start anywhere else, is a high chance they'll have to go back and get your tray because they ran out of trays. You know, we hungry as hell, bro. By this time, it's dinner time done rolled by. We still ain't ate lunch from earlier. So dinner time done rolled by. We see the trays coming in here. That boy T jump up. He went to the door. He said, Bill, Bill, them trays out there, Bill, Bill. You know, I jumped up ASAP. I'm like, boy, what we got today? What's on the tray? He like, shit, I don't know. He grabbed his spoon out of his box. He said, to be honest, I don't even give a fuck. I know I'm finna blister pack my tray. I said, she, who you telling? We need to try to see if we can do up some type of way. Get another tray. So, you know, listen, listen, this is how you know a nigga hungry. T standing at the door looking out the window. I'm walking back and forth, pasting in the cell. Every 30 seconds, I'm asking T, where they at? Where they at with them trays, T? T, where they at with them trays, T? So he looking, he like, shit, they at room such and such. Both of us got a spoon in our hand. <laughs> but we were hungry and fuck. They get up there, passing out the trays. I say, our room and the room right next to ours. They came down there, the, the orderly was looking through the window. He said, hey, how many in here? How many in here? So we like, so T at the door, he like, it's two of us. So he like, shit, I'm going to have to go back and get y'all a train because we ran out of train. So we like, man, hell no. Nah. So T was like, hey, bro, man, double us up, man. Try to double us up. Fuck with us. We said we missed the train. So he was like, all right, I'm going to see what I can do. Dude end up leaving out like he going to get the trays. Bro, hours go by, bro. They fed trays around 3 o'clock. Next thing you know, I done laid down multiple times trying to doze off. Stomach feel like it's doing cartwheels. Stomach sucking in, touching my back. Man, next thing you know, we hear beep, beep, beep. That's the officer coming on the shift. They got this little thing where they touch the door and it's like it do they count for them automatically, like showing that they doing their rounds. So when we hear that, I jump up, hey, sir, run over there to the door. It's a whole new officer. I'm like, hey, officer. He's like, what's up? I'm like, bro, we ain't eight, bro. The second shift comes on at six o'clock. 
Bro, three hours went by. We didn't even notice. I guess we dozed off in that bitch. Sun. We were so hungry. The time was just rolling by. We like, bro, we ain't ate, bro. So he like, y'all ain't ate. We like, bro, we ain't eat. He said he ran out of trays. He had to go get some more. So the dude that was in the, dorm ne in the door next to us, he go to spazzing out too. Like, hey, bro, man, them trays, bro. Man, come on with them trays, bro. He pull out a little pen and a little pad. He write the two rooms down. So he like, all right, I'm going to see about getting y'all something. You know, the kitchen closed, bro. So I probably can't get you no tray, but I'll probably get y'all a pack out or something. A pack out is a fruit, either an apple or orange, and two sandwiches. Most of the time it's a, a peanut butter sandwich, and then another one is a uh, another one is a uh, like a ham bologna sandwich or something like that. So I'm like, man, come on with it, bro. We hungry. We ain't ate shit since breakfast, bro. So he like, all right, I'm gonna see. He leave, go on about his business. Next thing you know, bro. Hours don't went by. I'm sitting here kicking the door, bro, with the last little energy I got left in my body. I felt, I'm talking, about, I'm in there like this. Feel like I'm about to damn pass out. I go to kicking the door. Boom, 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 boom. Dude next door to me go to kicking the door. Boom, 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 boom. So now we go to talking to them through the vent, like, bro, y'all ain't eat for real. So he like, hell no. We just was asking to see if they was pulling the move because we really didn't eat for real. So now we on the same page. We both on point. Like, bro, we, every time we see off, so we go to beating on the door. Do, do, do. We still, bro, we beating on the door about 20 minutes straight, nonstop. Dude that's right up under us named Spirit. Who he had a little motion going on. He was doing the one in the door calling people folks for him, doing stuff and stuff like that. So he go to hollering out the back window. He like, yo. He like, hey, who that is kicking on the door? So I'm like, shit. This us up here in the room. He like, what y'all kicking on the door for? So off the dribble, T was like, fuck that nigga talking about y'all kicking on the door. Fuck that nigga worry about what we kicking on the door for. So I'm like, you know, this nigga might be able to help us. I'm like, bro, we ain't eat, bro. They ain't give us no trade. So he like, man, shit, man. Nigga down here trying to sleep, bro. So I'm like, I just walked straight away from the door. Walked right back over there to the door. Boom, 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 boom. So he don't say nothing. Bro, next door to me, crank it up. Boo, 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 boo. But the man is not coming. Nowhere to be seen. I can't even see the officer no more from this point. So I told T, I'm like, bro, we're going to have to flood this bitch out, bro. That's how we're going to get the officer attention. So flooding it out basically means you flood it out. You, you, you plug stuff in the toilet and keep running it till the water runs over and it start going all the way out because they got to call up orderly to come in there and clean it up. The officer finally gets back in there, bro. The man want to avoid us so bad, he don't even care about his round not being done completely. I'm looking out the window. He doing beep, beep, beep. When he gets to these last two rooms, he go walking straight down the steps. So I'm like, say, officer, bro, what's up with them trays, bro? We ain't ate shit, bro. What's up, bro? He keeps walking down the stairs like he ain't hear nothing. I said, bro, I swear to God, bro, if you don't come talk to me, I'm finna flood this bitch out all motherfucking night. When I say that, he stopped in his tracks. They don't want that issue. It's gonna be a big mess in they dorm, bro. It's a lot they got to do when people start flooding, so he stopped. He walked back up the stairs. He said, who said that? Who said that? He come over there, some dude that don't talking crazy. So he come over, he's like, who said something about flooding? I said, me, nigga. So he's like, what, what the hell are you talking about flooding? I'm like, bro, what's up with the food you said you was going to get us, bro? That man looked over and said, shit, man, you know, the kitchen closed, man. I had I had called down there and tried to see what I could do, but the kitchen closed. I know he lying. He been sitting here ignoring us and all this. I'm like, so what are you going to do about us not eating? You're not going to do nothing. You're not going to make sure we get fed. He like, I mean, the kitchen closed, bro. What you want us, what you want me to do? I'm like, bro, you can still get pack outs, bro. Even when the kitchen closed, they keep a whole bunch of pack outs. There's a supervisor here that got a key to that kitchen that can go straight in there, grab three, four pack outs for us to eat, bro. They keep pack outs put together all the time for just in case there's a situation where somebody didn't eat. They keep that. So he's basically not even trying to call a staff member. He's not trying to do nothing. He's not trying to do none of that. So I'm like, well, man, I'm about to call and see. I'm about to call again and see. So I'm like, all right, so why? I'm saying, all right, T, like, man, fuck that shit, man. Flood this bitch out, man. So, me and T go figuring out which clothes, which tiles that we don't need, we don't care about getting dirt. So, T run over there to the door. He stuffed the bottom of the door with a, a towel and a pair of pants. Then I take a towel, tie a knot in it, so it's kind of a fat knot. I go to pushing it in the toilet, and I 
pushed it like real hard so that it's right. It it, it stops the uh the hole basically it stops it from going down. And then shit, we picked up all our shoes, whatever we had on the floor. And then I went to flush in the toilet. And then I threw it uh cause the, the sink on the inside, they had a crack on the inside, inside of there. So I took a, a shirt, did the same thing, tied a knot, clogged up the thing so the water can't really go out there. And I was sitting there pressing the water on the sink, flushing the toilet. Pressing the water on the sink, flushing the toilet. Pressing the water on the sink, flushing the toilet. So bruh spirit downstairs go to hollering again. Hey bro, what y'all doing? Y'all ain't flooding up there, is so I was ignoring him for a minute, pressing thing, pressing thing. He like, who the, who the hell that is? Who the hell that is in the room up there? So ain't that one of us saying, I'm pressing the sink, flushing the toilet. So now the water is overflowing from the sink, falling straight on the floor, and the water is coming out the toilet, getting straight on the floor. But the the door is clogged up so tight with the, with the pants and the towel, some of it going to probably still seep through, but a whole lot of it is not. So I heard somebody say, I think that's CBL and T up there. So, bro, going say, say, hey, CBL. Say, hey, CBL. So, I'm not saying nothing. I'm saying, because he can hear it through the drains, because he's right under us, so he can hear me keep flushing the toilet. So, he like, say, T. Say, T. So, T like, whoa. So, he like, man, what y'all doing? Y'all up there flooding. So, T ain't say nothing. So, like, bro, y'all up there flooding, bro. T like, yeah, nigga, what the fuck you keep asking me questions if we flooding for? Nigga, so what, nigga? What, nigga, who the fuck you think you in? So the nigga Spirit said, but that's a weird thing, but y'all flood this shit, and I got to go swimming. And when somebody say, if I got to go swimming, that basically mean if I flood and water get all in your room, they just call that, I'm down here swimming, because it's water everywhere. He like, bro, y'all flood this shit out, and I got to go to swimming, bro. Man, when I catch y'all niggas on the pound, beating y'all ass, bro, that's on my mama, bro. And T was like, make sure you have your knife with your bitch ass, nigga. I'm like, man, stop arguing with that nigga, bro. So he stopped talking to him. So I'm sitting here hitting it, sitting here hitting it, sitting here hitting it. Bro, next thing you know, it's probably water. When I say all the way up, like halfway up my up my, my shin, bro. I'm talking about I had to take my socks off and everything, roll my pants leg up. It's water like, if this is my feet, it's water like this high up in the room, just all in the room. I snatched that pants from under the door. Snatched that towel from under the door, and then next thing you know, all that water just went out the room. You could just hear it falling down the steps. So that means people in the room next door to us, and then the other people, whoever was on the top range on this end, up until it went down the steps, it went all in their room. So the dude next door, he like, man, I thought y'all was bullshit. I heard the toilet going, but we thought y'all was playing. We was like, hell no. He was like, shit, I'm hitting it too. So he went to doing it, but he waited until we already let the water out. So I'm still just sitting here flushing the toilet, flushing the toilet. All the new water just coming out, going down the stairs. The people in the room right next door to me, they go to flood, hit me. So now it's so much water coming out, bro. That gets the officer attention. He running the door. I'm talking about, man, what y'all doing, man? What y'all doing, man? Y'all ain't, what y'all doing, man? Because now he's responsible for this. So I'm like, nigga, fuck that shit. I ain't going to stop flooding until you bring us something to eat, folks. So he leave out the dorm, bro. He gone for like 10 minutes, bro. Man comes back in the dorm with like six pack outs in his hand. He like, just stop, bro. Y'all stop. Y'all stop. I got y'all fool right here. And he comes up there. We stop. I stopped hitting it. He come up there, unlocked the flap, and gave us three in this room and gave them three in that room. So I got one. T got one. Then we split one. And when he gave it to me, I'm like, bro, wow. Why did I have to do all this for you to bring us something to eat, folks? What is wrong with you, bro? Why you didn't go do that at first, bro? He didn't even say a word to me. He closed the flat back, locked the thing. That's why I stress, bro. Y'all don't want to go there, bro. Stay out of that shit, bro. That prison. That's not nothing nobody want to ever go through, bro. You got people handle you any kind of way. They know you damn starving like Marvin. And they won't do nothing about it, bro. They just leave it at that. They don't even care, bro. That's why I say, bro, just do the right thing. Stay out the streets, bro. Make money, not excuses, bro. So he, once we stopped flooding, he got an orderly in there. And then the orderly cleaned up all the, uh... All the flood water. The orderly was mad as hell because he had to get up out of his sleep to come clean it up. And then the officer was mad because now he got to watch this other inmate to try to police him around, make sure he ain't doing that, make sure he ain't doing that, instead of being able to just kick back and chill. Yeah, man, just do the right thing. That street life is weak, bro. I promise you, it's weak. It's watered down. Loyalty ain't there no more, bro. But, 
Yeah, that just goes to show how far, you know what I'm saying? They willing to take it, bro. Like, they don't give a damn if you eat or not, G. That should be enough right there, bro. It's your boy Bill, I'm gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What the fees? What the fees? What the fees?